In this problem, we have a pipe that's being suspended by two pieces of rope. The first piece of rope is connected to a ceiling or a crane, perhaps, this vertical section. And the second piece of rope runs from the left side of the pipe, angles, and runs back down to the right side. And it's tied to the vertical rope. And here I've got a side view of the same drawing. And in this problem, what we want to investigate is the tension in both of the ropes, so the tension in these two sections and then the vertical section. And more specifically, we want to determine what effect the length of this horizontal rope has on the tension within it. So on the very left, we have a situation in which the rope attached to the pipe is relatively short. And as we move to the right, these are situations in which that rope becomes longer and longer. And at the very right, the rope is very long. And one thing that we see is that the points where the rope is connected to the pipe become more and more vertical. And that's important because if I draw tension on this rope, it's only the vertical component of this tension that supports the weight of the pipe. So as my rope, if it's more and more horizontal, there's very little vertical component to these forces. And that means that the tension in the rope has to be very large if it's relatively horizontal. Conversely, if the ropes are essentially vertical, the tension points more and more in the direction of gravity. And we tend to see reduced amount of tension in the situation on the right. And in fact, I would predict that if the rope was infinitely long, both of the tensions point straight up, and the tension in the rope itself will equal one half the weight of the pipe. For notation, let's call this point A, this is point B, and this is point C, and we'll call this the length of the pipe, or we'll just call it L pipe. And we'll want to make a graph of the tension in the rope AB, this section of rope right here. And we want to do it as a function of the total length of the rope AB and C. Well, one thing we know is that LABC, the length of that rope, can't be less than the length of the pipe itself. So we'll just put this, here's the length of the pipe. And if LABC was equal to the length of the pipe, there would be no vertical component of the tension in that rope. And what we would find is that the tension would have to be infinitely large in the situation if we move far to the left, for example, on these diagrams. And as we move to the right, as LABC gets longer and longer, the ropes become more and more vertical. And as we come down, I would expect it to taper off, eventually becoming horizontal, until we get to a case in which the tension is equal to one-half times the mass of the pipe times gravity. So we'll work this problem uh, mathematically and see if we do indeed come up with a graph that looks like this. So to do that, let's examine a more specific problem statement. And we've got a pipe that's two meters long, and it's lifted by the ropes at points A and C. And we know the mass of the pipe's 1,000 kilograms, and the rope's made out of quarter-inch nylon. It'll snap if the tension at any location on the rope exceeds 1,500 pounds. And what we want to calculate is the minimum length of rope ABC that's needed to prevent it from snapping. So if we have ABC as we considered before, the shorter that length of rope is, the less vertical component of tension we'll have, and the higher the force. So we want to figure out the minimum length of rope ABC, in addition to graphing the tension in that rope as a function of its length. So let's begin by drawing a free body diagram of the whole system. And when you draw a free body diagram, all you're doing is drawing the outline of the diagram itself. So here's just the outline of the diagram. And let's draw all of the forces acting on it. Of course, we've got gravity, which acts downward at the center of mass. And we've got the tension uh, occurring in this vertical section of rope. I'll just call it T1. And note that I'm not going to include the tension in the rope ABC itself because it's part of the system and, and we would call it an internal force. We don't include it on our free body diagram. And because it's a static system, we've got the sum of forces half to equal zero. And this means that the sum of all of the Y components of the forces equals zero. And what this says, if we, if we look at that, then we've got T1 acting in the vertical Y direction and we've got MG acting in the negative Y direction. The sum of those has to equal zero. And we come up with a not surprising fact that the tension in that rope is simply equal to the weight of the pipe itself. Well, unfortunately, that doesn't answer our problems. We somehow have to isolate uh, rope ABC to figure out the tension in that rope. And I propose we do it by just looking at this knot right at location B, where the two ropes are knotted together. And a free body diagram of the knot itself is just a dot. And there's three forces acting on the dot. There's T1 acting upward. And in the diagonal to the lower left, we'll call that TAB. And to the lower right, we'll call it the tension T 
bc, so this vector here. And because the knot isn't accelerating, it's not moving, the sum of forces in the horizontal and the vertical directions must both equal zero. So to analyze this problem, we'll need to break each of those vectors into their component form. So let's look at T1, the vertical component of it. I'm going to draw T1 without the vector on top. We'll just say without a vector, it's a scalar, and that's acting in the j-hat direction. In the j-hat direction, if I draw my coordinate axes, i-hat direction acts to the right, and the j-hat direction acts vertically. And the vector TAB can also be broken into its component forms, and I'll call this TAB in the x direction, and TABx is acting to the left, or in the negative i-hat direction, and TABy is the scalar in the y direction, and that's acting in the negative j-hat direction. Or I could pull the negative signs out and write it this way. We need to figure out the components, though, of TAB in the horizontal and vertical directions. So here I'm just decomposing it. We'll call this angle theta, and we'll call this TABx, and TABx is simply equal to TAB cosine of theta, and TABy is simply equal to TAB times the sine of theta. The value of theta itself is going to be dictated by the length of rope ABC. And here's my value of theta again. So I have theta on the left side and also uh, the same angle on the right side. So let's write our two equations for the sum of forces in the x and the y direction for the knot. And what we find is we'll have negative TAB in the x direction plus TBCx, which is the x component of the length rope BC. And the sum of these two will equal zero. And in the vertical direction, we'll have T1 acting upward, and the y components of TAB acting in the downward direction. So here's TABy minus TBcy. And the sum of these three forces have to equal zero. But we already know that T1 has to equal mg by our first free body diagram, so I'll erase that, and we'll just make the substitution that T1 is equal to mg. Here are the component forms of the tensions in, a, in the two ropes. We'll just make a couple of substitutions here. And when we make these substitutions, we're left with the fact that the tension in rope AB has to equal, just by symmetry, the tension in rope BC. In making those substitutions, we're left with this expression, and we'll have 2 times TAB sine theta is equal to mg. If we rearrange solve for theta and then uh, plug in values for the mass of the pipe and the tension in AB that would cause it to snap, we find that theta, in this case the critical angle of theta, is 47 degrees. So any value of theta less than this would cause the rope to snap, and any value larger than this, the ropes could support the pipe. But we're not trying to find the value of theta, we're trying to find this total length of rope ABC. With a little bit of trigonometry, we'll find that this length is one-half times the length of the pipe. And the, the cosine of theta, if we solve for it, the LAB is the hypotenuse of this triangle, and it's equal to one-half the total length of LABC. Solving for LABC, we know the length of the pipe, we know the value of theta, and we come up with a value of 2.9 meters for LABC. If it was any shorter than 2.9 meters, that rope would snap. To make the graph, we would use these two equations. We just make the substitution of theta, and we'd solve for TAB as a function of the length ABC. After making those substitutions, I come up with this expression. In making a graph of that, we, we do find a similar shape as, as what we drew qualitatively at the beginning of this screencast. And at 2 meters, we have the length of the pipe. And in that case, the tension would go to infinity. And on the horizontal, it asymptotes to 4,900 newtons which is equal to one-half mg.